but this is 2008. I was at a conference and Jim Stern, who's been around in the analytics industry a long time, was a moderator. And um, he asked me, Brian, what, you know, now you're leaving Google, what's the next big thing around the corner? What's going to happen? And I said, privacy. And it was like a giggle and uh, a scoffing around the hall and, and people just didn't take it seriously. Uh, and didn't for many years, but only a few people have talked about it because it was kind of considered a career killer because no one was interested. Everyone's gone past privacy. We just want to yeah, track everything and deliver the right ad at the right time to the right person. You know, that kind of mantra that was pushed by Google and Facebook and others. But it really started with Edward Snowden when uh, he revealed what was happening with mass surveillance. Um, after that, we had the, the complete mess of Cambridge Analytica, which was abusing Facebook's data. And then we had GDPR, um, and those are the three things that have snowballed each building on the other, which has just meant privacy now is top of everyone's mind, and, and not just organizations who are collecting the data, but actually their customers and people who come to their website. They, they realize what they're doing when they're visiting a website, and if a product is, uh, is free, that they in fact are the product. So the generation of 20-somethings that I talk to, because I've done you know, guest lecturing over the years, uh, 10, 15 years ago, people weren't interested in privacy. Now you talk to 20-somethings coming out of uh, university, they are very savvy. They understand uh, data harvesting, the surveillance economy, and they're very wary about giving data. That kind of mentality, plus managers realizing that's their customers, that's their user base, that's their staff even, uh, thinking like this, that, that privacy has become I hope for many organizations and asset, it's something that you want to care and nurture and look after and not just treat as a, as a tick box compliance exercise. Well, I remember this time when, when GDPR was about to launch and everyone kind of knew what was coming. Um, there was two types of reactions. One was, you know, thank God for that because, you know, the wild west of this, you know, data harvesting you know, has to stop. There has to be some regulation. It can't just be free for all. So there was one kind of side and mainly focused in Europe that felt that way. And then if you talk to you know, some American colleagues, they just thought this was crazy. What are you trying to do? You're trying to kill the internet, you, you Europeans. It just, it's not going to work. Of course, IP addresses get transferred all the time. What's the big deal? There's no harm. Privacy isn't about whether harm is being done. Of course, harm can be done, but privacy is about, well, it's a fundamental human right. And that's always how Europeans have felt about it. We've been through two world wars and the Cold War. We have a, perhaps a different perspective on, on privacy to other parts of the world. But for us, for Europeans, it, it's very much about, it doesn't have to be anything to do with harm. You don't have to be doing anything bad in order to hide what you're doing. You just want to protect and have a say in what happens with your data. And the Americans, they just don't have that perspective. As, as long as no harm is being done, what's the problem? Organizations were in shock in the fact that they had to take responsibility. They could no longer outsource it and say, well, it was our agency or, well, that was what Google do and that Facebook do and it's nothing to do with us. That's the central sort of remit of, of GDPR is it's no, if you're collecting data from your website, you are the data controller and you ultimately as the website owner is responsible for that. And obviously that's a big thing to take on. But even five years after GDPR, there's still a lot of confusion about what it actually means. I mean, how many analysts or how many uh, marketers have actually read the GDPR? I would guess quite a, a small number. Um, and there's still a lot of myths out there, misinformation about what needs to be done. Uh, but ultimately, anyone that's collecting data has to really think about why am I collecting this data? What is the purpose and how am I going to use it? It's still uh, a bit of a minefield for analysts for marketers, for web designers, web developers. Um, it's not fully formed, it's still being figured out. But ultimately, you've got to bring legal on, or compliance team involved in the conversation so that they can advise and put things into context. But at the moment, it's still quite badly uh, panning out. So there's lots of websites you can go to where you can find a banner that says, do we have consent? And even if you say reject all, say, no, I don't want to be tracked, tracking still carries on as you continue through the website. Now, the big question is, is that done deliberately? Is the website sneakily trying to collect data it shouldn't do? In my experience, no. In my experience, most of the time, it's just a misunderstanding or a misconfiguration or yeah, people just not quite knowing what they need to do.